Rani. Thank you, uh, uh, Minister, I, I echo the, the, the sentiment expressed by my colleague Chuck Osnodi. This is a, a step in the right direction, but it really is only uh, a step. It isn't what I believe uh, what the representative organisations of Angarda Siakana want. I, I believe that they want uh, trade union status. They want to be represented uh, by a recognised trade union and they want the protections that that, give, that that gives. It is interesting that the people who uh, will be the ones who draft the, the legislation um, have access to a trade union. The people in these buildings have access to a trade union. It's not outrageous to suggest that people should have uh, access to be represented by a trade union. But here's the thing, and the point was made that uh, members of Vanguard Shiakona and members of the Defence Forces are, are special and they're not like other workers and, they're, and they're, they are different. And that may very well be true. But both of the major political parties, uh, the, 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 the two, and we often say in government together, um, but they treated them like the same as every other worker when they were cutting their pay. There was no special status accorded to them then. I remember in 2009, uh, as a full-time union organiser with SIP2, we joined up with uh, firefighters, with prison officers, uh, with nurses from other trade unions, and with members of Vanguard of Shiakana. We'd have joined with the Defence Forces too, uh, but that wasn't um, permitted. And we formed an organisation called the 24-7 Alliance. And during the course of that, I had occasion to, to speak with uh, and work very closely with members of Vanguard of Shiakana. And we teased out the issue of access to industrial relations machinery, what that would mean and how you could ultimately get some value out of it. And around the same time, I had a case in the, the Labour Court, a case that I won, and uh, it entitled the members to uh, a, a small amount of compensation. And I went back to the Labour Court because I couldn't get it enforced. So I went back to the Labour Court to see if there was anything that could be done. And the chairman of the Labour Court was very blunt with me. And he said, well, you know what you can do, Miss O'Reilly? You can get your ballot box out and you can ballot for industrial action. Because in a voluntary system of industrial relations, at the end of the road, and believe me, when I say the road is long, uh, Deputy O'Study has already outlined the wait to get to the industrial relations machinery but you have significant time spent at local level before you even get there. You then get to the LRC as well as the WRC as is now. And even when you win sometimes, you still have to, uh, have to have recourse to a ballot for industrial action. But there are hundreds of thousands of unionised workers in this state, and there are very few days lost to strikes. So that's really uh, a testament to the, to the men and women in uh, industrial relations and human resources and in the, uh, in the WRC. It's very rare that strikes happen. But what I would like you to give some consideration to, Minister, is if these workers are to be treated differently from other workers. And I, and I stress that we welcome this. It's a step in the right direction. But if they are to be treated differently to other workers, then another worker who has taken their case to the Labour Court, who has won their case in the Labour Court and who cannot get enforcement, has recourse to take industrial action. Have you any plans to give members of Angarda Siakana and we would hope members of the Defence Forces, if included, the option to somehow take that final step. You're saying that they can't take industrial action, but if they can't take industrial action thereafter, what option is open to them? Because uh, other workers, and it really is a very, it's very much the last resort. We, we don't lose many days uh, to strike action in this state, and we haven't for, for a long time. I think we, we hit a peak sometime in the, uh, in the 70s, um, and I don't think that we you know, we are not, the, the, the nature of industrial relations in this state, and I practised it myself for a good long time, uh, as did my, uh, my father, and it's something I have some small amount of knowledge of. Strike is the very last thing you're going to do, but when it comes to that, it comes to that because it is necessary and because there is no other avenue. So I suppose my question is, can consideration and will consideration be given to ensuring that, uh, that there is a mechanism for enforcement, because other workers have that mechanism for enforcement. It is withdrawal of their labour, but they have it. Um, but the refusal to allow them full trade union uh, status and access to a trade union, 
I think is a bit short-sighted. Um, I know that that is what they want, but I do think if that's not going to happen, if that's not going to happen via this legislation, well then consideration has to be given as to how they are to use the industrial relations mechanism. So in the case where they have access to the WRC, to the Labour Court, they, they go to the end, they win their case, how then is it, is it going to be enforced? Because uh, I can tell you, as someone who represented public service workers, there's zero appetite on the part of human resource managers to simply say, oh, you won your case in the Labour Court, there you go, there, there's, there's the check or there's the change in the conditions. It doesn't work like that. And you need to have some sort of recourse to be able to make good on uh, the recommendations of the, the Labour Court, because in a voluntary system, that's all they are or in the event that the Labour Court makes a recommendation and your members reject it, what happens then? Do you simply say to members of Angarda Siakana, well, therefore we've legislated to, to give you the right to be unhappy about this result and, and then that's it, you go on about your business? It does make it a little bit, uh, a little bit pointless if there is nothing at the end of it that they, can, uh, that, they can, that they can aspire to, as they would do if they were members of a trade union. And I, I don't wish to be overly negative. I say it only based on experience and as I say in, uh, in 2009 when uh, the, the threat of pay cuts was very, very real and we formed the 24-7 alliance, I had lengthy discussions with members of Angarda Siakana and their representatives and I know that full trade union status certainly was what they were looking for at that time and access to the third party machinery. Access to the third party machinery is a really, really welcome step but you do have to give consideration to what it actually means in the event that the, the third party machinery um, doesn't deliver or isn't capable of uh, delivering for those workers. And I would remind you, when it came to cut and pay, you treated them the same as every single other worker in the state. Uh, and I think it is a little bit for them to hear, um, perhaps a little bit harsh for them to hear that they are, they are very special Except when it comes to uh, except when it comes to pay cuts. Oh my God.